Mike Dell's World, number 211, for April 5th, 2015. Don't bend the space on continuum for me, baby. Quit screwing around with that thing. You found Mike Dell's world. And good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever the case may be. This is Mike. And uh, I did record it a, a little uh, on the road segment, but I wanted to uh, get in here before I play that. Uh, just to let you know that I'm going to be in Las Vegas for the uh, New Media Expo and the National Association of Broadcasters. You can uh, find me at the Blueberry slash Raw Voice booth there in the uh, New Media section of the conference. If you're going to be there, please stop by and say hello. I'll be there probably about half the time, and uh, the rest of the time the the guys will know where I'm at or when I'll be back. So uh, if you're out there, uh, please make a point to stop by. So uh, today's segment I recorded as I drove along uh, Lake Huron uh, between Alpena and Oscoda, Michigan, on a uh, route that I did this morning, and uh, talk about all kinds of stuff. I I don't know. I'll I'll put some sort of notes in the show notes, but uh, you get what you get. I kind of just randomly turned on the, the mic and... And uh, I think I did all right trying to stay on task. So <laughs> anyway, check it out. Catch me later. And hello from Alpena, Michigan. I'm on the road today. Today being the 5th of April, Easter Sunday. Uh, I'm working today. So I don't really have any big uh, family things planned. Though uh, my mom had her, uh, or has having her normal Easter gathering, uh, just so happened that it uh, fell on my weekend to do the the route here. So it is what it is, and uh, that's just fine. It's actually a nice day. It was supposed to be crappy, <laughs> but uh, it's a. Uh, it's pretty nice. It's, I don't know, probably 40-ish and sunshine, dry, no uh, no snow, no rain. We were supposed to get some snow. I had some yesterday, but not enough to uh, even accumulate it all, just spitting snow, as I call it. And uh, I got to do something yesterday that I don't normally get to do. I uh, got to drive a big truck. One of the guys uh, that does a uh, postal route on Saturdays uh, called in sick, so uh, they called me up and had me go over to the uh, truck leasing place and pick up a truck and uh, load out and uh, go for a 300-mile ride uh, to uh, various postal facilities. So uh, that was kind of cool. I said don't get to do that very often, but... uh, and uh, I just uh, know I, I do enjoy driving the uh, minivan better. <laughs> yeah, but it wasn't bad. Uh, like I said, good to, uh, good to pilot something that size once in a while. Keep the skills up or something or remind you of what you forgot. And uh, backing into loading docks is, is not one of my fortes. But uh, I didn't. I didn't destroy and or or uh, damage anything in the process, so it's all good. <laughs> Backed into eight loading docks, and uh, I was eight for eight. And let's see. I've been doing some uh, some thinking here. Uh, I got a friend that lives in uh, what many would call paradise, out in, in Honolulu. And uh, he's been going on a rant lately about, you know, the traffic situation out there and the, the crowds and, uh, you know, and he kind of lives a ways out of town, but he has to 
commute into town and uh, I guess that's just a real hassle and I'm sure that you know Hawaii is probably not the worst place to be uh, I'm sure uh, all the big cities are that way that's one of the main reasons I don't live in a big city uh, you know, Traverse City is big enough it uh, you know we've got everything we need as far as services and of course we've got our uh, you know, generic USA areas you know with all the chain restaurants and fast food and all that. well we don't have as much fast food as other cities because we've got such a, a foodie area as it is we've got some locally uh, run fast food uh, outlets that are uh, much better than the chains and plus a lot of uh, local locally owned and operated restaurants that are uh, quite good so we don't have that much of that kind of generic stuff but we got all the big box stores and or most of them and you know we could use an apple store we do have a uh, a mac dealer that's uh, pretty darn close to an apple store but not quite uh, but we're not too far away from that if uh, you absolutely have to go to an Apple store. And we you know, could use a uh, guitar center or something like that, but you know, it's not a big enough area for that. But one of the main reasons I like living where I live is lifestyle. Uh, you know, I hear uh, another friend out in L.A. that uh, every time they go anywhere, you know, parking is like a major thing on their minds. You got another friend that's uh, from New York and lives here now. We're well, not here. I'm, like I said, between Alpena and Oscoda, driving along beautiful Lake Huron on the sunrise side of the state, and uh, it's all open water uh, right here uh, over on the Lake Michigan side by Petoskey and Charlevoix. This morning, uh, it was still ice as far as you could see, but on this side, it's all open. Anyway, boy, I'm just rambling along. I guess that's what I like to do when I'm driving and podcasting but you know lifestyle around here you know just the pole parking thing it's like eh, you know we don't generally have to worry about that now you know in our downtown area there's you know we have a couple parking decks and we've got uh, you know metered parking on the street and it's almost impossible to get that and but generally, if you want to go downtown, downtown Traverse City, you can find a place to park. And, you know, it's either free or it's fairly cheap. Anywhere else you go beyond that, it's all free parking and, and ample free parking. Uh, no matter where you go, you know, in my, you know, in, a lot of people I live in, uh, areas where you know they live in an apartment and you know if they have a vehicle they gotta pay extra for parking it's the same thing with like hotels uh all the hotels around here you know they don't have free parking on the sign they might have it on their website or something but you know it's just a given that up here if you get a hotel room you get a place to park your car it's not like that elsewhere you know i remember not too long ago going to chicago for a conference and staying at the Hilton there and parking my car there was uh, I want to say it was 20 bucks a day you know on top of you know whatever they charge for the room and you know, another time we went to Chicago for something else and uh, you know we had to park three blocks away in a in a uh, open lot that you know charged eight bucks for however long we were there it's like you know I'm not used to that and and that's one of the, that's the other reason I like living up here. You know, I don't have to worry about traffic jams. Well, you know, I take in the summer, the tourist season. You know, we get some traffic, but it's nothing like these. You know, three hour to go uh, twenty mile type traffic jams. I mean, you know, we might be delayed by fifteen minutes, twenty minutes. You know, and it's usually caused by uh, some catastrophic accident that uh, they closed the road for or something of that sort you know or you know like the one or two times a year that uh, we have some huge event uh, 
like in Traverse City during Cherry Festival, they always have an air show on uh, the Saturday and Sunday of festival. And, you know, usually they have the Blue Angels. Uh, this year they've got the uh, U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds. That's going to be a huge traffic jam coming out of Traverse City when that show's over. Uh, that's just the way it is. And, you know, but that's so few and far between. I bet you there's maybe 10 days a year where traffic is, a, a, is an issue. And it's not that big an issue. You know, and I have, you know, my, one of my coworkers commutes from the east side of town all the way to outside of town on the west. She's got a bit of a, a traffic issue, but it's not huge. I mean, she still can get the uh, 15 miles or so done within a half an hour or so. So, I mean, it's not terrible. It's not like, you know, you know, like with, with my buddy there in, in uh, Hawaii, it took him uh, four hours to go 40 miles or 30 miles or something. I forget what it was. I, I think he went 40 miles total round trip and spent seven hours in the car. Something something crazy like that. I'll have to go back and look to uh, make sure. But, you know, we don't have that here. You know, at 5 o'clock uh, drive time going across town, you know, yeah, we got a, a, a major road. It's, uh, you know, two lanes each direction and a center turn lane that, uh, yeah, okay, you might have to wait through five cycles of a traffic light. But you're going to get through. And, you know, and it's not going to be two hours. It's going to be 15 minutes or 10 minutes, something like that. So, you know, we do have our traffic issues, but they're not that bad. You know, and the other thing up here is we don't have the uh, necessarily the crime rate that other places have now i don't know how hawaii is as far as crime and you know and i don't think most parts of la or most parts of uh, new york are as bad as one would think if you don't live there you know otherwise you know why would people live there even detroit is not nearly as bad you know not well (laughs) <laughs> there's bad parts of Detroit, just like there's bad parts of just about any city. But, you know, right downtown Detroit, uh, you know, if you're, if you're from around there, you know about it. Uh, inside the people mover loop, uh, it's, they've cleaned it up quite a bit. And, uh, you know, there's not the all, all the derelict buildings and stuff you see on the news and, and all that in that part of Detroit. And, you know, they're, they're cleaning up their act. They're, they're getting there. I don't know how long it'll take, and I wouldn't get out of my car around 8 Mile Road still, but, (laughs) you know, like I said, it's one of the bad areas. But like I said, the lifestyle here is is much different than than what I hear from people that live in the the big cities. And I've never lived in a big city per se. I've lived in some large areas, uh, you know, like northwest Florida, you know, all around Eglin Air Force Base, you, know, you got Pensacola, Fort Walton, uh, you know, that whole area there is kind of one big, long city. But, you know, I still don't ever remember paying to park routinely there. <coughs> and I don't remember a huge crime rate there. You know, here in, in northern Michigan, you know, it's not uncommon for people to leave their houses unlocked. I mean, we probably do a fair amount of the time, but uh, usually there's somebody there or somebody nearby. You know, it's not not like, you know, we'll, we'll go go away for a week and uh, leave the doors wide open. But, uh, you know, and I, I don't have any problem. You know, I pull in my garage and half the time I don't shut the door to the garage. You know, the garage is detached from the house, but I don't, you know, eh, it's like... Why bother? I don't have an electric garage door opener, so I just uh, pull in, park. You know, I don't leave the keys in the van, usually, because I usually have something or another in the van that uh, I wouldn't want to lose. Not that it's valuable in any way, uh, but, you know. So, I, you know, I do lock the, the vehicle most of the time in the driveway or in the garage. But I don't, you don't have to. 
as much up here. You know, there's like I said, there's bad eggs everywhere, and you know we have our fair share. I'm sure, otherwise we wouldn't have such a robust police department and sheriff's department in the county. You know, they, they those guys stay busy. They earn their money, so there's stuff going on. But it's it's rare. It's much more rare than in other parts of the world. And like I said, the big thing is the the traffic the uh, parking situation but like right now i'm driving along uh u.s highway 23 it's a nice little two-lane road Uh, goes from the mackinac bridge down to uh, i don't know somewhere uh, near saginaw i guess uh, saginaw bay all along lake huron here and it's a nice Sunday morning, you know, they've got a couple cars going my way. I see a few coming the other way. But it's not bumper to bumper, and it's not, uh, you know, a, a, a big freeway. Uh, you know, we've got, you know, we got a freeway up here, right down the middle of the state, I-75. And, uh, you know, U.S. 27 is freeway up to a certain point. And there's U.S. 131 that just south of us that's uh, a freeway. Which is nice for getting in and out, but uh, you know we're a good 40 miles away from any freeway where I live, and where I'm at right now, uh, south of Alpena, uh, I'm probably a good uh, 50, 60 miles away from any freeway. Uh, but you don't need it, not in this area anyway. Uh, you know, now this this stretch does get busy in the summer, and of course, you know, being Michigan. Uh, as soon as uh, the snow melts completely, uh, they go into construction mode, so you end up with lots of uh, construction zones and, and all that. But, you know, we've got kind of a, a short season up here to, to work on the road, so they got to do it. But uh, I wouldn't trade uh, living here for uh, living pretty much anywhere else. And, yes, we get winter, you know, and we get a, a fair dose of winter. Uh, last couple of them have been uh, pretty brutal. Uh, not this last one, but the one before was extremely brutal. Uh, and this last one was a bit on the brutal side. Uh, we didn't get uh, quite as much snow, and we didn't get uh, nearly the uh, sub-zero stuff that uh, we got the year before. And, you know, still today, like I said, it was supposed to be snowing. It's not. But uh, that's the other thing about living in the Great Lakes is uh, these big lakes tend to uh, flummox the uh, weather forecasters a lot of the time. So you can't always bank on uh, what they say until like the day before. You know, anything longer than a couple of days is going to be usually wrong (laughs) in some way or another. I just got past. Look at that. I'm on a four-lane stretch here. Not not a freeway, but just a four-lane stretch. And a lady looked over at me like, uh, what's he doing talking into that microphone? (laughs) I know over on my other podcast, we discuss mobile podcasting quite a bit the safety thereof but i think i'm much safer uh, doing this than i would be uh, screwing around with my phone uh, i got it all set up while i was uh, parked and hit the record button and every once in a while i i look to make sure that it's uh, still recording which it is otherwise you wouldn't be hearing this now would you but uh so you know believe me i'm being i'm being safe Holding the uh, microphone uh, up to my mouth, uh, you know, if I tried doing it the other way, you'd hear all the background noise. You're probably hearing a, a bit of background noise. I, the last time I recorded this way, I must have set the the uh, record level a little bit lower than I normally do, and it uh, actually was kind of hard to get it boosted up to where it belonged. So, but you didn't come here to listen to me. Uh, talk about podcasting uh, you can do that over at uh, podcasthelpdesk.com where that's what i talk about Let's see other things going on oh yeah yeah i, I uh, fell upon a deal uh, for something that uh, should provide me with uh, some 
some enjoyment and uh, and transportation. Uh, I'll go back uh, till last fall. A friend of ours uh, had a, has a 18 year old. Well, she's 19 now. Uh, at the time, 18 year old daughter who uh, had a or has well, whatever she had a uh, one of those. Uh, Chinese scooters, you know, you see them all over the place, you know, $600 for a scooter, you know, and, and, uh, I never gave it much thought. I always thought, well, geez, you know, you buy something like that, you ride it until it breaks and, and, uh, you'll never get parts for it and they're cheap and they're crappy. And, you know, I always wanted a, you know, Honda or a Yamaha or a Vespa or whatever, a genuine, you know, any of those, uh, more name brand scooters. I've been kind of a scooter slash moped enthusiast, uh, although I've only had a couple. Uh, had an original Solex back in the 70s. I don't know if you remember those, uh, the ones with the engine on the front wheel, made in France, usually black, but some of them were yellow. I think they were some blue ones, but predominantly they were black. They had the uh, engine on the front wheel, and it had a little roller that... Uh, that run on the front wheel and that's what propelled you thing would go uh, 20 miles an hour uh, on the flat uh, max speed and that was it and uh, i enjoyed the heck out of that you had to help it up hills that dinky little engine on it uh would you know so but it would help you up the hills i guess and you, you pedaled it just like a you know that was a true moped and nowadays uh, what they call mopeds are not this thing that I got from this 18-year-old girl who uh, blew the belt. That's a, the story I started there. She blew the belt on the thing near our house, so she pushed it into our driveway and put it in front of the garage and you know, with the intention, I am sure, to come back and get it and get the belt fixed and, and uh, whatever. And it sat there, and then it got covered with snow. And I thought, well, all right, I'll wheel it around. I put it in our woodshed. Figured uh, she'll get it in the spring, and uh, anyway, I'm tinkering around. All the snow melted in our yard, so I was tinkering around in the woodshed. Pulled it out, and said, hmm, "I better text her and see what she, her plans are with this thing." I, and jokingly, I said, uh, "Hey, what do you want for this moped?" And she said, "I don't know. What do you give me?" I texted back, said, uh, "I don't know, two hundred bucks." She says, "Done." <laughs> so she brought me the key and. And the paperwork, and uh, I'm now the proud proud owner of a LeFan QT50 moped. <laughs> it's got a uh, 50cc uh, uh, air-cooled four-stroke. That that surprised me. I always thought those were two-stroke. This is a four-stroke. It's a, a copy of a Honda design, uh, uh, the GY6 Honda engine, which uh, Honda used in a lot of their scooters in the uh, probably the 80s I want to say uh, they had some scooter products and uh, and uh, little four wheelers you know for kids and uh, little motorcycles for kids because it's a, a CVT transmission a constant variable you know automatic you don't have to uh, shift it there's no clutch and all that but they, uh, the engines a, it's a strong little engine push the uh, average little moped size bike uh, you know up to 35 40 45 you know depending on the weight of the rider and you know if you're whether you're going up down hills or whatever and they're pretty reliable I guess and the beauty of it is is since the Chinese have now uh, taken over manufacturing these things in mass there's just gobs and oodles of parts out there there's that oodles and gobs I don't know but there's just tons and tons of parts, and you know me being the geek that I am, I always like to research this stuff. So I've been doing a lot of reading about the uh, GY6 engine and the Chinese scooters and the Taiwanese scooters, and uh, I guess they even uh, even uh, uh, make them in uh, in uh, oh, India, also uh, all under the same. 
cheap copy of the GY6, and I don't know if it's officially licensed or not, but, and the parts aren't exactly interchangeable, but the design is obviously exactly the same or damn close. So, I've been uh, having fun. Uh, I ordered uh, a bunch of parts. I got the... Uh, got the uh the belt and uh, i had to get a new clutch for it and, and a cooling fan and i don't know i think that's it so far i'll probably do tires on it here soon and brakes the brakes seem okay and the tires seem okay but usually that's the the things that uh, will need attention still waiting on the cooling fan that's what caused the belt to break, I'm sure, because the cooling fan, all the blades were off of it. And the cooling fan's actually in the transmission area, and, and it's mainly for cooling the belt and the clutch. And it's a really neat setup. Like I said, I won't go into grisly details, but uh, by uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, I hope to uh, take the maiden voyage on the, uh, on the cheap Chinese scooter. <laughs> I'm going to make that thing look like a, a Mad Max machine. You know, when when, uh, when I got it, uh, or when Tori got it, uh, it had this trunk on the back, a fiberglass trunk, and it was mounted to this rack, and the, the rack is like the cheapest pot metal thing, and it was all cracked and loose and all that. So I reinforced that and got rid of the trunk. <coughs> And I'm going to put a, uh, a milk crate on the back of the thing. Bolt that down because the milk crate will fit my backpack just fine. And uh, I'll probably be riding that thing back and forth to work uh, on nice days anyway. And as long as it'll do uh, 35, it's great for in town, you know, on the side streets and whatever. I would never dream of taking the thing out on the big roads. But, uh, you know, just buzzing around town, you know, you buzz up to the store to get something or, uh, or just want to go for a little tootle around the neighborhood, it'd be perfect. And don't know if it'll be rugged enough to take up to uh, Sugar Island, but uh, it'll probably make the journey anyway. <laughs> Whether or not uh, you can really ride it around there on the dirt, I don't know. It doesn't really have dirt tires on it, but... Uh, yeah, it'll be good, you know, kind of like a pit bike. I'm going to make a, a rack or something to put it on the camper, so when we go camping, I'll have, have that to tootle around on. But like I said, you know, it's a, it's a toy, total total toy. And I might even geek out on it and put a, you know, do some mods to it. But uh, I'm gonna it, right now it's bright yellow. I'm going to paint it to... Uh, flat black probably and uh, the body panels being it's cheap and Chinese uh, the body panels on it aren't exactly uh, fitting properly and uh, some of them are cracked and needs turn signals uh, those are broke off and you know just minor stuff but uh, I figure I'll, I'll put that milk crate on the back and then I'll mount a couple of turn signal lights just big honking something maybe off of a tractor I don't know but paint the thing flat black and and uh, you know duct tape and bailing wire and don't care what it looks like. It's just a, like I said, it's just a toy. And uh, sometimes it's nice to uh, have something like that that's just a, a toy that you don't really care about. Uh, at least you don't care to the point where you're gonna worry if it if it falls over. Or, get scratched or whatever you know ultimately I'd like to find a what's known as a big ruckus <laughs> a Honda had these things uh, I don't know what they're called overseas but in the states they're called the ruckus and it's a little 50cc scooter but it doesn't have all the plastic on it it's you know just a tube frame uh, kind of you know it's kind of the home V of scooters and that's the one I always wanted since they came out. And they're still making that one, so I could still get that one. But there's a, a bigger version of it called the Big Ruckus, and it's kind of the same design, 
Only it's got a 250 cc engine and it's freeway legal and it'll do 70 miles an hour. And the best part of it, I think, is it has a seat built for two, but you can flip it up and it, if you're just riding one, and it's got a you know it's a backrest. It's like you know sitting in a, <laughs> a regular chair on top of this scooter thing. It'll do 70 miles an hour. So if I can find one of those, they only brought them into the States for two years, 2005, 2006. So they're kind of hard to find and they're expensive when you find them. But being that they're Hondas, they'll probably uh, run forever and and all that. Uh, I had a, a few years ago, I bought a couple of these uh, Honda, oh, now I can't even remember, Honda Express. Uh, they were mopeds without pedals. I mean, they were literally the same exact thing that Honda was selling as a moped with pedals, you know, with, you know, pedals that you could power it with if the engine wasn't running. And then they made one that got rid of the pedal mechanism and just had the, uh, just had the engine and a couple foot pegs. And those were two stroke. And that's the first time I'd ever dealt with a two stroke Honda. And most of the parts for that thing being the I think they were made in 77, 78, 79 most of those parts are made of unobtainium <laughs> and nobody makes aftermarket parts for them because they're not that popular so, so you know you'd scour eBay and find you know a used carburetor and order it and find out it has the same problem as the carburetor that you're having problems with and I don't know I fiddled with those things over a summer I had two of them and I bought the second one for a parts bike and and uh realize that uh, you know what I, i'm tired of chasing parts so i gave up on the idea and figured i'd save up and either buy the ruckus or buy a uh, a genuine a genuine scooter company is a, a company it's a u.s based company that has their scooters made in india and uh taiwan and they make a, a vespa a clone of a uh, older Vespa that they call a Stella, and it's a real popular scoot uh, scooter. You know, it's a 150 cc at one t- at first they were two strokes, now they're four strokes because of the EPA uh, emissions. But uh, you know, you have to register them as a motorcycle. But they're very popular. Uh, guy know uh, has one and. They're a lot of fun, but they also make, you know, some of the cheaper kind. They make one called a, uh, oh, geez, what is it? Yeah. I can't remember. But anyway, they make one that's kind of similar to the uh, Ruckus, being that it's kind of a minimalist type and costs about seven or $800 less than the Honda. And I thought about that one, too, but I don't know. I think... Uh, Ultimately, I'll, I'll find a big ruckus. And, uh, and since they still make them in Japan, the parts are still available. They just don't sell them in the States anymore. So you can get parts for the big ruckus. And, of course, the, the little ruckus you can get parts for because they still make them. You can go to the Honda dealer and, and get all the parts. And I'm kind of thinking that with this John Deere project that... Uh, that I, uh, you know, the more I think about it, the more I think, you know, those parts are going to get harder and harder to find. Uh, there's one particular part in the drive line of the John Deere called a variator. And if you find one, they're super expensive. You could buy a whole tractor for the price of a new variator if you can find one. Uh, you can buy a used whole tractor which probably has the variator problem. So uh, it's not a, usually a good plan to, to buy another one for just to get the parts. But I am going to restore that one because uh, it's Grandpa's original tractor, and I, I do want to restore it. But the one that I use, I'm either going to go one of two ways. I'm going to either buy a newer one <laughs> and, and bag the idea of making that one work right, or I'm going to re-engine it with a uh, either a diesel engine they, they do make a diesel that you can uh, bolt in that is if I can get the variator working right but uh, they make a diesel engine 
or uh, Honda makes a, a bolt-in replacement engine, you know, brand new. Uh, you know, the original engine's 10 horse in that one, and Honda engine's 13. You know, not that that makes a whole lot of difference in a yard tractor, but you know, might make make some difference blowing snow or whatever. But then again, I think, well, you know what? Maybe I'll just go get uh, go get one of those. Uh, from Sears or, or uh, MTD or whatever, and you know, that way, okay, I got to replace the thing every ten years or so. But <laughs> how many more ten years do I get that I need to worry about a tractor? So that might be the way to go. Uh, less hassle factor. So I guess uh, with that, I just thought I'd make a quick update here. I'm just coming into a little town and I still don't know the name of the town whatever happened to signs that announce your arrival in a certain town and and your departure it used to be uh, every town had a little sign and this little one doesn't I think it's called Harrisonville but I'm not sure it's just north of Oscoda the f- former uh, Wurtsmith Air Force Base is in Oscoda now home of uh, Evergreen Airlines North. The only reason I know that is uh, in the courier business, they've uh, actually made some deliveries of airplane parts out to uh, Evergreen. It's kind of neat. Uh, they do a couple things out there. They they uh, buy and scrap 747s. So all the old 747s that get uh, decommissioned, uh, not all of them, because they put a lot of them out in the desert for parts for the ones that are still flying. But, uh, you know, the older model uh, 747s, this guy buys them and brings them out here. And they, they sit on the ramp out at the old uh, Air Force Base until they get around to taking all the good parts off of them and then cutting them into pieces and selling them for scrap. So at any one time, there's usually six, seven, eight of them sitting out on the ramp. It's kind of neat to see. You can drive right up to them <laughs> out there. Now that it's not a an active Air Force base, the security is much less, <laughs> at least on that ramp. And then another thing they do is they do uh, what they call depot-level maintenance on uh, airliners. So they uh, generally have at least one or two uh, you know, 757, 767s, uh, 737s. I think they mostly do Boeing aircraft, but I don't know for sure. That's all I've ever seen out there is uh, twin jets, uh, Boeing twin jets, and like I said, an occasional 747 uh, that's flyable because Evergreen also has a cargo operation, and they operate 747s. So, uh, that's, uh, but they don't do that out of here. I mean, yeah, they're, occasionally their planes show up here for you know, hauling parts away or dropping parts off or whatever they're doing I don't know but uh, you see them here every now and again in Oscoda so I'm sorry for the geography lesson but <laughs> and I remember uh, when I was in the Air Force I'd come home on leave and uh, I don't know what it was why why I wanted to come over to Wurtsmith but it was when it was still open and it was only maybe a couple of years before they uh, closed it I remember coming out there, and they had uh, two or three of these big barracks buildings uh, being built. Big three-story, uh, you know, more or less like a hotel. I, you know, it's like a, like a, uh, you know, like a Hampton Inn or something. That kind of building, but it was, you know, a dormitory for, for uh, unaccompanied airmen. And they had, you know, two of these things, uh, you know, in the process of being built. And they had already announced that they were closing the place. So I didn't quite understand that. And then since I've been out there, actually one of them is a Hampton Inn. So (laughs) I guess uh, they put it to good use. And you'd think, you know, an Air Force base moving out of a a small town like this would uh, be devastating and actually... uh, it's actually helped it's brought in business where uh, a lot of times a you know big military installation moves out and it causes all kinds of trouble and they've done a pretty good job over the last uh, 20 or so years uh, recovering from that here and uh, it's quite a retirement community also for uh, ex-military that were stationed here 
and uh, the business climate's pretty good. Uh, when I was out there last time, I uh, talked to an old uh, chief master sergeant who uh, retired from there and uh, was a uh, security guard on, on Evergreen's ramp and <laughs> shot the breeze with him for a little bit. And, and uh, like I said, looks like it looks like they're doing really good. So, anyway, enough of that uh, from uh, the shores of Lake Huron on the road. I'll catch you next time. Oh, and I'm not sure if I talked about it. This is uh, me after the recording from the road. Not sure if I talked about it, but uh, I've got a, a new blog of sorts, a blog for the sake of blogging. <laughs> so. It's uh, I don't know what distinguishes it from MikeDell.com, but anyway, that's uh, that's kind of what it is. It's where I put the uh, more personal stuff, and I'm going to put the more uh, uh, well, I don't know about impersonal, but more uh, general interest stuff right on MikeDell.com, where this podcast is posted. And of course, the rant section over at MikeDell.com/slash/rants, and now I've got a yet a third place, MikeDell.com/slash/blog. And it's just a simple blog for blogging's sake. And I'm also using Audio Boom, so I'm going to have little audio updates there from time to time. Be sure to uh, keep uh, listening to that uh, or checking that over the next uh, couple of weeks uh, for the Vegas trip and uh, and all that. I'm sure I'll have little snippets to uh, upload from from Vegas and. Who knows, I might even put out an actual podcast uh, during the week uh, while there. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how busy the evenings are for the most part. I think uh, I think we're booked up for the first few days of next week, but uh, who knows. Anyway, now I'm really out of here. Catch me later. <laughs>